Laura, let me cut in there and cross over to Zoom, where we've been joined by uh, Mr. Sami Jemfi, the um, National Communications Officer of the National Democratic Congress, NDC. Good morning. Mr. Jemfi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please. Great. Uh, thanks for joining us. Hope you're doing well. By God's grace, I'm good. Yes, I look for me. It's been a while. <laughs> So, <laughs> I, I will see you. Okay. Right. So we're looking at this issue, uh, which is of great importance to many. Obviously, coming from the legal fraternity, this is of importance to you, in as much as, yes, Dr. Ayene is also coming from the NDC. Now, let's look at what we have before us, the referral by the CJ of Dr. Dominic Ayene to uh, the Disciplinary Committee of the General Legal Council. Some have said that in view of what transpired during the election petition hearing where Dr. Ayene was actually um, cited for contempt for similar comments made. Perhaps he should have uh, known better to avoid making uh, similar comments even after the, 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 the petition had been heard. Um, what do you say to that? Uh, good morning to your cherished viewers. Let me make the point that uh, even though I'm a lawyer, I'm speaking on this case um, as the National Communications Officer for the NDC. Uh, because as a lawyer, I work in the chambers of uh, Dr. Aine. And so ethically, that wouldn't have um, allowed me to comment on this matter. But um, because of my role as the National Communications Officer of the largest opposition party, the NDC, um, I am bound to com com comment on this matter and let the public know what the position of the party is on this issue. Um, my sister, the point is um, the freedom of expression is guaranteed under the 1992 Constitution. That's freedom of expression of all citizens. In a democracy, all institutions are subject to that freedom of expression. They are subject to scrutiny and criticism by the people. And the judiciary is no exception. Uh, we as lawyers know that judicial decisions are not sacrosanct and um, can be critiqued constructively. If you look at the um, comment of Dr. Ayene, which is an issue here, or which has necessitated uh, his referral to the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council. Okay. As a political party, we don't see anything wrong with that comment. There is nothing in that comment which, in our view, scandalizes the judiciary or the Supreme Court of Ghana. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, in that alleged comment that breaches any of the rules stipulated in LI 613 or the latest LI um, on, 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 on um, in the legal profession rules or the legal profession act. Nothing in that statement constitutes a misconduct by a lawyer, you know, either under the legal profession act or in LI 613 or the new amendments. And the letter referring the matter to the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council does not make any allusion to any such rule that has been violated or breached by the alleged comment of Dr. Ayene. Again, if you look at the letter from the chairman of the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council to Dr. Ayene, asking him to... Um, um, I mean, respond to the petition from the judicial secretary. There is no reference to any such provision in any, you know, um, of the rules I have mentioned, whether it's the Legal Profession Act or it is LI 613 and so on and so forth. So, what misconduct has Dr. Ine committed to deserve or to warrant this decision by the Chief Justice? and the uh, General Legal Council. As for the General Legal Council, you can't even blame them because they, a petition or a complaint has been referred to them and they are supposed to investigate. But one would have thought that 
at least their letter to Dr. Aini, which I have been privileged to, to, to have cited, would have made reference to what specifically they are investigating him for. But there is no such reference. But and that is because of the fact that Dr. Aini has not breached any of the legal profession rules and etiquettes for lawyers or has not misconducted his way, uh, himself in any way. My sister, what is Dr. Aine alleged to have said? The man says that, uh, for me, that's speaking for himself, after the Supreme Court had delivered its judgment on the 2020 election petition, the Supreme Court breached certain known procedures of law. And that, for him, that dampened his hope about the independence of the judiciary. I mean, is that not an opinion Dr. Aine is entitled to? He's but entitled to have an opinion. Mr. Jeff, let me come, in, let me, let me come in here quickly. Fair point, he may have made an opinion, but for this particular uh, incident, if you like, or in, this, in respect of this particular issue, Dr. Aine had or has a history of a similar comment. And so when we are looking at this particular incident, which is the panel discussion where he made the comment, we are also looking at the history where he made a similar mm. comment. Mm. No, so, no, 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 but the letter does make reference to that. We can't take away. No. We can't and, run away from that. Just that, a minute. Let me land. That, let me that land. Is even, that, that, let me land. That, that, that is even unheard of. Let me finish the question. Listen. Let me finish the question. I'm not done. So he, and after he made that comment during the hearing of the petition, he actually apologized for making that statement and said he was out of step. He shouldn't have made that statement. And so for him to come back a few months later to make that statement again, then he raises issues about that. You, you once apologized for making that statement, but you've gone back to make that statement. That is false. That is not what happened, or that is not what has happened. The statement Dr. Ine made that led to that contempt you know, charge being brought against him by the Supreme Court for which he duly apologized for and for which he was discharged by the Supreme Court is materially different from the comments he made on that CBD platform after the judgment was delivered. How so? I, and, and I, want to, I don't want to go into the details because no, but how different I was is very it? active in the election petition. No, if I can explain that to you. Sure. In that, in that um, uh, statement, he made comments about uh, certain things that had been done by the Supreme Court showing that they had a predetermined mind mm -hmm. or they had a predetermined position against the petitioner and all that. I'm not sure that if you read the attached publication to the letter from the chairman of the disciplinary committee to Dr. Hine, you will get a sense that he is alleged to have made a comment that the Supreme Court had a predetermined mind about the case. But he raised I don't think issues so. about the independence. No, he but I'm saying that. Right. <laughs> no, but, but, but in the first comment, he didn't talk about his hopes about the independence of the judiciary. So I'm saying that we are dealing with two different and distinct situations here. And the two cannot be equated. The first one, I also, another difference is that the first one was a contempt proceeding. Okay? This one, is a disciplinary proceeding which has been brought against him by the Chief Justice. For making comments okay. that he had made earlier, similar comments. So but you know that contempt and disciplinary proceedings, contempt proceedings against a lawyer or a genier, a citizen, a person, is not the same as disciplinary proceedings against a lawyer. No, I, I get that. Because but when, please, let me make things up. You are looking, you are looking at the comments you see, made you first. I, 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 you are looking I, I, at the comments made. If you just one minute, you, you will get the trust of my answer. I'm saying that there are two answers I have to that question. In the first place, in my opinion, mm -hmm. the two statements you are talking about are not the same and cannot be equated. The second thing I'm saying, uh, the point I'm making, is that a contempt proceeding against a person is different, which is, a, uh, I mean, the quasi-criminal matter, is different, materially different, from a disciplinary proceeding against a lawyer for misconduct. And as lawyers, we understand the difference. 
Number three, that contempt issue, the comment for which he was cited for contempt, that he, he duly paid himself off and he was discharged mm -hmm. off, I mean, by the Supreme Court, has been tried and determined. It's been tried and determined by the apex court of the land. And so how that matter which has already been settled, be dis disposed of, can form the basis of, no, but, but know, I don't think it's forming the basis, Mr. Sami Jenfi. I don't think I don't I don't think in my submissions I may, I'm saying that that forms the basis. Not at all. The fact is clear, or oh, it is it is a fact that Dr. Ayine, during the election petition, made statements for which he was cited for contempt and purged himself of. Yes, that is, it yes. is true. But it's not mm -hmm. a basis for him making the statement. I cannot say that for him. That is a basis. But I'm just saying that. So, so how, why did the judicial it? secretary? No, what? Why did the judicial secretary make reference to a comment which has already been dealt with by the Supreme Court and been settled in this petition? What has that comment got to do with the comments Dr. Ayini made after the the, the, the Supreme Court delivered this judgment? Which comments? is materially distinguishable from the comments he is alleged to have made in the course of that um, 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 in the hearing of that petition. So please, I am saying that if as a lawyer on an academic platform, okay, where academic freedoms are guaranteed, I'm called upon to do a critique of a judgment of a court, and I say, that in my opinion, these known rules of procedure were ignored by the court in the way it dealt with certain interlocutory applications of the petitioner. And so for me, my hopes about the independence of the judiciary has been dampened. And you say that that constitutes misconduct. I mean, what rule does that, that, does that breach in the Legal Profession Act or in LI 613 or the new amendments, which borders on, I mean, uh, rules and etiquettes for, for the legal profession. I have not seen any, and I would be happy for anybody to show me which, I mean, provision has been breached by Dr. Ayini, or how has he misconducted himself in this matter, to the extent that neither the letter from the Judicial Secretary nor the one from the Chairman of the Disciplinary Committee makes reference to any such provision or any such misconduct. Um, the NDC thinks that this may well be another attempt to suppress dissent and victimize critical voices. And we are determined to fiercely resist that. We need to protect our democracy as citizens of this country. We are enjoined to do so by the Constitution. We need to prevent state institutions you know, from arrogating to themselves the powers to summon and punish those who criticize them because their criticism may not be pleasant. But, once but, they well. have not scandalized the court, once they have not impugned the integrity or the sanctity of the court, I think that people should be allowed to express themselves without any uh, intimidation or harassment whatsoever. I heard uh, a point, if I can make this point, talk about the fact that in his, in his opinion, um, the Supreme Court did nothing on tour, which is his opinion and which I respect. But in my opinion, known provisions of our laws were sidestepped by the Supreme Court in the hearing of this 2020 election petition. Take, for example, the issue of who an adverse witness is. When we are not in the Supreme Court, when the Supreme Court adopted the Black Law Dictionary of who an adverse witness is, which runs contrary to what our own interpretation act says about an adverse witness. When the Supreme Court said, a person cannot be an adverse witness until and unless that person has mounted the witness box, was that not a clear error in law? And yet, when the Supreme Court was given an opportunity to correct this error in a review application, they refused to do so. So that per imperial decision, in my opinion, that bad decision still stands. Very so well. if Dr. Ina is raising some of these issues of procedure, which in his view, 
went contrary to the laws of this country. And he says that my hopes, my hopes about the independence of the judiciary has been dampened. I mean, what, what is wrong with that? Thanks, thanks, Mr. Uh, is the judiciary going to detect to him what his hopes about the judiciary should be? Thank you, your point. Are we all bound to go with the, the views of the judiciary about what their independence are? It is for the citizens. The citizens of this country to assess the judiciary. Thank that you. is his opinion. That mm -hmm. is his assessment. And as a political party, we think that is in order. We stand with him and we will stand with him mm -hmm. and fight this case to the very end. Because today it can be Dr. Yine, and tomorrow it can be Loyal Pong. And so we well. must all work hard. Very we well. must all boldly. Very well. Lastly, know, come together lastly, and ensure that we protect. Lastly, Dr. Yine, and I quickly go to um, Mr. Pong. He apologized once for making disparaging comments about the, um, the, the, the judiciary. And standing by him, what happens if he should, you know, repeat that apology? Would you still stand I mean, by him? I don't think. I, 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 I mean, I've had conversations with him that I am not, um, I am not allowed to put out. But from where I stand, I don't think that you'll be apologizing to anybody on this Very matter well. because he has done no wrong. Very well. Thank and you for that. Even if he decides to apologize, it doesn't stop anyone from expressing an opinion that supports the position he took or that, 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 that says that we don't think that what he has done warrants his referral to the disciplinary yeah. committee of the general legal council. That is also our opinion. Sure. We are Very entitled well. to that. That's, that's, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Paul, that, quickly, uh, a few, if you have a few that's reactions vintage, to that. That's vintage, Samir Jeffrey, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, the, I don't want to comment on his opinion in this matter, because to be honest with you, nothing he said, in my view, is offensive. But raising issues about the breach of known procedures and principles, yes, referring I mean, to the use I mean, of adverse witness. We, we, when, if, if it was a court of appeal, that can be a ground for appeal mm. at the Supreme Court, what he said. I mean, when you say that, put the judgment and the facts side by side, the court may have, like that's, I mean, normal uh, general mm -hmm. omnibus appeal. The explanation is that the court ignored or failed to consider certain facts and for that matter, gave judgment in favor of another party. That is not offensive. And I don't think that the matter really is about criticism. Because I will repeat that nothing he has said, in my view, would have led me to contemporaneously say that he's out of order. Very well. In, in, in actual fact, I mean, he's, he has expressed his view. And the, even if a court ignores settled practice and the law and the principles, it cannot lead me to make the point that it, it, it's evidence of a court having no mind of its own yeah. or being not being independent. So I, I think in that aspect. But, 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 but see, he that has is not exactly what Dr. Ine said. You know, Dr. Ine didn't say that the fact that the courts ignored known or settled principles of law meant that the court didn't have a mind of its own. He said that that dampened his hopes about the independence of the court. That is him speaking but as how, but how else can you Sammy, interpret Sammy, that? Sammy, um, I Mr. Was on the program. How, how else can you interpret that? Having laid that you foundation let, let and coming to that conclusion. I'm saying that I have nothing wrong with what you have said. In fact, I'm not even in the <laughs> position to judge. That is vintage you. It is fine. But I am saying that it is okay for all of us to criticize decisions of the court. And the court encourage that, as you have already said. It is for Dr. Ini to decide whether, as he did in the previous situation, whether the two are the same, and therefore he, he thinks he has erred again, or for him to stand by what he has said and defend to the end. And that has happened in previous um, uh, situations. We, we still go by back to honorable social situation. Mm. There have been others whose own had been varied sure. on sure. appeal. So that invitation, and as I said, I don't wish that to happen to Sammy, but being an active lawyer one day or the other, an invitation will be extended 
and you will go there. All the opportunities that avail anybody against yeah. whom a charge has been made. I will, I will come to you to be my lawyer. When <laughs> that Very well. I, I will stand by you. But <laughs> I will express my opinion first Very as well. to whether or not. <laughs> Out to soon, I mean, unfortunately, this is, this is where we need to bring this part of the show to uh, a close. Thank you, Mr. Sami Jemfi, uh, for joining us. We appreciate your contribution. Thanks for having me. Right, sure. So that's uh, Mr. Sami Jemfi, the National Communications Officer of the NDC. He is a lawyer as well. And in the studio, we had Mr. Yao Pong, also a private legal practitioner and a member of the NPP legal team in the election petition. Was it the NPP legal team or the NANA? A member of Nana Adudanko's legal team. Sorry, I'm not that.